I've been a birder since I was a kid, and I've been a birder at St. Mark's since before I moved here. I've been here for about 35 years. I've led field trips at St. Mark's for maybe 15 years, and I retired a couple of years ago and asked them, what do you need? You know, I've, I've, got, I've got time. And they said, would you like to do uh, shorebird surveys? St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge is a top birding destination. We know that. But bird populations are declining around the world, and shorebirds in particular have seen their numbers drop by about 30% in North America. That's why Don Murrow shows up twice a month, before dawn, to count shorebirds. It's not a bad way to spend a morning. I always get out here and assume that I'm going to be sitting in the dark for an hour, and then within about you know, five or ten minutes, you can start uh, making out detail. And tonight we're helped by the moon and dampened a little bit by the fog. Possibility we can get barred owls calling from the cypress dome over there. Or... <coughs> the great horned over here are almost subsonic as the. <coughs> Sometimes you just catch that last two, two hoot calls. That's a least bitter and calling there. It's a quiet morning right now. We're in September. Chuck Will's widows have uh, quit calling nighthawks. Uh, we could still get nighthawks. They're migrating, uh, migrating through, but our residents have already left. Now that Don can see the birds, it's time to count. We are at St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge. I'm doing a shorebird survey on the interior ponds. I've got a route that starts out at uh, the far end of Stony Bayou 2 and swerves around and lets me see all of the interior ponds. I've been doing this for four years and I always do the same route in the same ponds, even if there's nothing there seasonally, just to see what's there and just to make sure that it's easily comparable to the other surveys. The water's a little high for shorebirds in Stony Bayou 1. Uh, in order to keep woody vegetation from establishing in the uh, ponds. They have to be flooded at least part of the year. Uh, Barn um, <clears throat> Sorry, I get distracted easily. Uh, birder attention deficit disorder. Um, but we're in the process of, of switching over, but we still got some, some good mud here on the uh, back uh, and on the side edge of Stony Bayou 1 but I would expect most of the shorebirds to be over on either the salt flats or on Tower Pond. Those are the black skimmers barking. There's an arctic counting shorebirds because the they keep moving around, they keep walking back and forth. And what I promise the Fish and Wildlife Service is that I will be as accurate-ish as possible. <laughs> Nothing else in here, but it's a good pond and it is tidally influenced. Uh, you come back here in another uh, you know, three hours and most of these birds will be gone. Uh, they'll have moved out to the, uh, the coast and then when the, just before the next uh, high tide hits, if you stand here, Flocks of birds will come flying in. Yeah, we're somewhere between five and 600 birds, which is about normal for this time of the year. By the time you get to winter, we'll have over 3,000 shorebirds out here. Wow. Uh, and at that point, I will, be, I will be counting Dunlin by the hundred. Don has surveyed the refuge about twice a month for four years. After spending the morning with him, I can see why he finds it enjoyable. I just like all of it. I like watching the season unfold. I, I like being part of the morning as the night ends and the day begins. I find it relaxing. I, I, you know, I, I, I turn the data over to the Fish and Wildlife Service, but I also keep the data myself and I play with it and I graph it and I you know, look for patterns and I see what's uh, going, uh, going on. And it helps me to understand what's happening on the Gulf, uh, you know, what's happening in my, uh, my home turf. We're lucky that places like this were set aside. We need these lands. These lands are our legacy. These lands are what we own as, as a people. 
For WFSU, I'm Rob Diaz de Villegas. North Florida coasts are full of life, and I never tire of going out there, learning about them, and sharing them with you. Each of these videos comes with an in-depth blog post, and I've spent a bit of time on shorebirds these last couple of years. Subscribe to the WFSU Ecology blog, and subscribe to the WFSU Ecology YouTube channel to receive new stories on our area's remarkable natural spaces.